What's happening everybody? Trey here joined by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics we are in to the new century as uh, we're going through our top 10 albums from each year uh, started in 1965 and now up to 2000 so uh, uh, really looking forward to uh, getting into a, a new decade here. Yeah I am too Trey and as you said we're finally to this century it took a while as you guys know if you've been watching along with this series and if you haven't you need to go back and check check it out and catch up. Uh, I wasn't real thrilled about heading into the 90s, but I found mm. a lot of albums. They weren't real popular albums, at least here in the States, but a lot of albums I love. I'm kind of in the same boat with the 2000s mm -hmm. here, Trey, so I'm hoping to find some stuff that I really like. If you don't know how this works, Trey's going to pick first this year. We alternate every year. I'll go second, third. He'll go fourth and fifth. Pay attention because we want to know when this is over with your top five or top ten if you're feeling really, uh, really generous. Your top mm -hmm. five or top ten albums, and we also want to know who you think won. So, and if you're a patron, and if you're not, check out the Patreon link below, the Patreon link on the end screen. You get to vote on one of these albums for a live listening party that we do once a month over on YouTube. Yeah. Trey, you're going first, so yeah, check it out. I, uh, man, I think this is a really strong year just for my personal taste. And uh, we're going to start off with a, a group that appeared uh, in uh, one of my 90s lists. Did. We're going uh, Modest Mouse, Moon, and Antarctica, their third record, uh, title taken from the classic Blade Runner movie. Uh, their first major label release went to 120 on uh, the Billboard chart. So, uh, you know, not like a lot of success, but hey, they were on the, on right the chart. Uh, and I think this is really the peak of, uh, of the group um, as it blends that, uh, you know, kind of alt rock, indie, even psychedelic and emo uh just all blended up into isaac brock's great philosophical and uh, astute lyrics and a uh, fantastic guitar work that uh, just uh, hit you hit you right over the ears uh third planet the opener is uh one of their best songs life like weeds is probably my personal favorite and uh, tiny cities made of ashes and lives are a couple other notable tracks as well so a uh, shout out to modest mouse for uh, for, for kicking off the uh the new decade quite well yeah, and I listened to that album, and I did mm -hmm. like it. It probably would have come in at four or five for me if it was still around. I like Modest Mouse. I don't mm -hmm. love them. I know a lot of people do love them, but it's a very good choice there, Trey. My top pick, got to be it. I owned this CD at the time, the Marshall Mathers LP by Eminem. Third album, recorded over a two-month period in several studios around Detroit. Features more introspective lyricism, including M's thoughts on those rise from rags to riches. Mm -hmm. Not so much... You know, not so much into that alter character. Yeah, as the, much the as, slim shady. Yeah. yeah. The criticism of his music, his estranger from his family and wife are all subjects. It incorporates horror core and hardcore hip hop, also featured, as you know, with them, satirical songs. The sales on this thing is insane. And you'll <laughs> never see stuff like this nowadays with the way music is charted. But it debuted at one in the U.S., staying there for eight consecutive weeks. Wow. Sold almost two million copies <laughs> in its first week. Made it among the fastest selling studio albums in U.S. history. Rolling Stone named it the best album of 2000. It's been on all kinds of critics' lists. It sold over 21 million mm. copies worldwide, making it one of the best-selling albums of all time. Nominated for Album of the Year, won Best Rap Album at the Grammy Awards, while The Real Slim Shady won Best Rap Solo Performance, Best Tracks, The Real Slim Shady, The Way I Am, Stan, and I'm Back. Now, the fact that it was even nominated for Album of the Year, it mm -hmm. shows you how Eminem was able to break down barriers, whether you like him or not, and get this into the mainstream and this is my favorite m record as well just revisiting it and um yeah i really think it's apropos you chose this because uh eminem the best-selling artist of the 2000s it decade is. yes um you know just uh between that the eminem show which is coming up yep. about eight mile soundtrack his greatest hits which to this day is still uh, always in the top 200 on the billboard charts um you know his uh his uh, mainstream appeal, you know, he's the biggest rap star uh, in U.S. history, yeah, and he is. Um, so you know, it's uh, I, I think it's apropos that uh, you know he, he kicked off your your list right here. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go into a, a band that I knew of but never had listened to. We got White Pepper by Ween is my second choice, seventh studio album, one of Ween's, mo Ween's most polished mm -hmm. albums. Some songs, such as Even If You Don't, feature radio-friendly production, as for the most part, they play the album much more subdued than usual, All right. using pop, especially Beatles-based pop, and you can hear it in there, and AM radio staples for its inspiration. The title, I was wondering that, like, is this a Beatles thing? It's said to be a tip of the hat, of course, combining Sgt. Pepper's and the White Album. Best tracks, Even If You Don't, Stay Forever, and one that's probably not a best track, but it is stuck in my head, and it's hilarious. Bananas <laughs> and Blow, uh, maybe a shout out to uh, 
Peppers and uh, Milk for Bowie back in the day, but Bananas and Blow, but Ween with my number two album. No, I uh, got to check that out. I, I know The Mollusk by Ween, that's yeah. a great record, but uh, I did not get around to listening to that, so I will add that to my list. Um, I know Ween got a dedicated you know, fan base Definitely. out in there, so I'll have to check that out. But uh, my uh, second pick going to be, I think, a lot of people's number ones, uh, the fantastic uh, biggest a left turn, some have said, in music history, going from OK Computer to Kit A by Radiohead. Their fourth record went to number one, both sides of the pond, in the UK and in the US. Uh, Rolling Stone, Time Magazine, Pitchfork, all have named it the album of the decade. And um, the band kind of, if you don't know, traded their guitars uh, for synths, uh, big string sections, brass, among a plethora of other uh, instruments that you'll find out here. Um, and, you know, this is a bit of a, a quirky and a weird record at points. And, you know, just hearing Radiohead uh, die fully in kind of that electronica type sound, um, which they would uh, have for um, Amnesiac, their next record, which is, uh, um, it was meant to be initially a double record with right. Kid A and Amnesiac, but they decided to, to split it up and probably uh probably uh, the, the right choice but uh man uh, between the great bass line for the national anthem i love how the opener and the scratch vocals of everything in its right place uh how to disappear completely there's some very bleak sad moments on this record as well and um uh, idiotech one of their uh, great danceable tracks so there, there's still some variety on this record so now trey i had listened to this this one time mm -hmm. before this year and I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, I'm going to listen to it again. It went up to a 3 out of 5 stars for me. But it let me know a couple things. One, I still don't quite get it. Mm -hmm. And two, I had always considered Radiohead one of my top 5 bands of all time. Mm -hmm. But as we go through this, this yearly album draft, I'm realizing they really can't be in my mm -hmm. top 5. Uh, the stuff I love of them, which would be the Benz, OK Computers, and then Rainbows, definitely. Mm -hmm. But the other stuff so far that I've come across, I don't really like. So it kind of disappoints me. But I know I'm in the minority here because no, I know well, Kid A is. Well, is, I've, I've heard that from other fans, it's, though, as well. Or I got it a little bit more, but I think I got it as much as I'm going to get it. But anyway, all right, go ahead. What you got in number no, three? No, I, I like that. Now we're going to the Avalanches. Uh, since I left you, uh, the Australian um, electronic duo, uh, this is kind of like a dance record with some plunder phonics, which uh, uh, just showcases the, the great, you know, some of the best sampling you You'll ever hear said to have anywhere between 900 to 3500 samples um influenced by phil Spector, the beach boys they wanted to stand out from uh, the electronic music at the time which is focusing on the uh the bass and drum uh title track is uh an uplifting opener and samples of the main attractions every day i, I think you know you gotta go just check that out if you like that you're probably gonna like the the rest of the record very easy listen even though it clocks in around an hour um doesn't and everything about yeah, it at this and, time. and I'm not the biggest, you know, kind of dance music electronic guy just for an album context. Right. But this uh, this album blew me away, man. So go uh, go give that a spin. Uh, they've only released three studio records, and uh, their 2020 release was one of my favorites from that year too. So uh, good good group right there. Well, I'll tell you, Trey. Uh, I know a lot of sub genres and stuff, but you used the word. I've never even heard of the word plunder. <laughs> well, I, I I had to look look into it. It's yeah. Like I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All right, next up for me, my number three pick, The New Pornographers, and their album Mass Romantic. Their debut uh, album, they're an indie rock supergroup, if you want to use it, that, that term in there. Took three years to make this thing. Right. Failed to chart in Canada, and they're Canadian, so that's quite <laughs> odd, or the U.S., but positive reviews led to them having a sold-out tour. Okay, interesting. Which you didn't see very often back in the day. Uh, received a score or it won a Juno Award for Alternative Album of the Year. Best tracks, the title track, and Letter from an Occupant, but really a surprising for me. I'd heard the name, mm -hmm. but I didn't know anything by them. Next up, we got an album that I actually did a full album reaction to recently 100 Broken Windows by Idlewild, their second studio album. Their Scottish rock band formed in '95. Been described as indie punk and was compared to 1980s acts such as. Uh, Husker Du and R.E.M. Pretty good to be compared yeah, to. Yeah, that's some, some nice company there. Roddy Woomble, the lead vocalist, said the Smith served as a big influence on the album. Okay. It saw him singing his own accent in contrast to the previous releases where he tried to get that more American vocal. All right. I think it actually makes it much better. Spin ranked at number one on their list of most overlooked albums from the year. 
Best tracks, Idea Track, Little Discourage, The Bronze Medal. But a very solid album, start to finish. What you got at your number well, four? Yeah, track? I'll have to uh, I'll have to go check that out because uh, anything that's influenced by the Smiths and compared yeah, to REM. That's what I thought. You'd you like that. Um, I'm, I'm going to switch gears uh, just showing, I think, how strong this record was across a variety so of genres. So well, so well acclaimed. We have uh, the second record from D'Angelo. We have Voodoo right here, uh, recorded at the Electric Lady uh, Studios, which, of course, has Hendrix uh, helped get started in the late 60s. This debuted at number one as well. Uh, You know, kind of has that blend of soul, funk, R&B, just great grooves on this entire thing. And uh, he also, D'Angelo, produced the majority of the record. Uh, He appropriated most of the uh, instruments on the album songs, contributing with drums, electric guitar, keyboards, and percussion. So not only was he, you know, writing the songs, he had his uh, uh, fingerprints all over this. Pulling a little mini prints here. Oh, yeah. Um, And some other little research I found. Uh, he employed amplifiers, microphones, Fender Rhodes keyboards, and organ originally used by Stevie Wonder for talking books. So he he really had the getting the getting the spirit of the musicians in yeah. there. And uh, he also recorded on a board originally used by Hendrix. So pretty cool. Uh, how does it feel? Send it on. Play a player are highlights for me, but. Um, uh, you can definitely tell his influences from you know guys like Prince uh, in particular, yeah. and um, I think he uh, doesn't you know stay derivative of that, but he still is able to make his own sound. Really so. good choice, really good album. There. And uh, finishing it off with um, one of the uh, great uh, rock albums, I think of uh, of this decade, we have at the Drive-In's Relationship of Command, their third album, aggressive hardcore or post-hardcore effort. Um, we have a lot of a uh, you know great production on this which um, uh, showcases some layered vocals so a lot of passionate delivery by uh, the front man Cedric who would later go on to one of the more acclaimed groups of this uh, uh, century the Mars Volta progressive ah, okay. rock group which uh, you know their first album comes out in 2003 yep, but uh, it's on my list yeah so this, this has some pretty good critical acclaim as well 12th on NME's uh, album of the decade uh, features guest vocals from Iggy Pop so you know you know you're in for a treat when that happens uh, Arc Arsenal pattern against user one arm scissor, you know, kind of hit back to back to back, and uh, just a, a lot of energy in this record. Uh, quite, quite enjoyed. Somehow so. that one got by me. I did not listen to that one. I listened to a ton of albums. I'm going to go with my last pick on here is Lost Souls by Doves, their debut studio album, their British indie group, if you don't know. So it was recorded over a period of several years following the disillusion of their original uh, music okay. incarnation as house music act sub sub. So some of this was left over, some of it's new. It was a moderate chart success in the UK. It peaked at number 16. While the three singles went in the top 40. Best tracks, Catch a Sun, The Cedar Room, The Man Who Told Everything. Many considered it the best debut. I've many critics mm. since. Definitely maybe by Oasis. So on my list, Trey, I had a lot of uh, stuff that uh, were kind of hidden gems. I've got a ton of honorable mentions. Like I said, I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, we got PJ Harvey, Stories from the City, Stories Great from the Sea. The Lioness by Songs Ohio. Granddaddy's The Sophomore Slump, really good. Godspeed, You Black Emperor. A lot of critics have this as the best or second best mm-hmm. album behind Kid A. Lift Your Skinny Fist Like Antanas to Heaven. Got the White Stripes in here. We got Mad Season by Matchbox hey, 20. Shout just, out. just a shout out to Matchbox. Love them. We've got Billy Bragg and Wilco, Mermaid Avenue, Volume 2. Pretty cool album there. Yeah, I, I really enjoy a lot of those picks. Some others I had, Deftones' is White Pony, yeah. uh, Great Erica Badu's uh, Mama's Gun, you know, her and uh, Common and uh, D'Angelo all in the same label yeah. and helped each other with the roots as well, so kind of cool. Electric Wizards, Dope Throne, uh, some stoner metal right there. Outcast, Stangonia. I thought that might have made it, you top it, five. It, it, it hurt. It hurt to leave that one yeah. off, um, but uh, just a fantastic record record by uh, one of hip-hop's greatest duos. Queens of the Stone Age, uh, rated R record. Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory, one of the best-selling albums of the uh, century yeah. as well. Um, some classics on that. And for sure. Elliot Smith's Figure 8. So for me, uh, incredibly strong year when you look at the yeah, honorable really mentions plus uh, everything that was chosen as well. Um, I, I think it is a huge step up from 98 and 99. Oh, it which... is. And you just got to dig a little bit. Some of these mm-hmm. are very popular albums. A lot of them, though, we had to dig a little bit. So almost all of them, actually. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, interesting interesting way to start off the uh, new century right here. Let us know your winner and your favorites from the year 2000. And then next uh, next week, Dad, we will be back with 2001. Keep, uh, keep the train rolling. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Happy listening. And we will see you next time.